Hi, I'm Barry John, and welcome back to Let's Play Descent, and we have new foes. And new commentators, too. I'll let them introduce themselves. Well, I'm Laylight. I'm an old commentator, but I'm here for a new session. I'm Lockspawn. I'm here for new for both, for both ways. Well, welcome, Lockspawn, and welcome to level 10, the, uh, mid the last of our Mars levels. And this is me playing, you know, Corridor Sniper, but this room, I like this room. This room is big, it's got lots of nice enemies into it, and it's a preview of, well, it's been commented about in the thread that Descent really shines when there's room to maneuver, and this co tight corridor shooting uh, kind of plays against the strengths of the game. But it's when you get out into big rooms like this, and suddenly, you have room to fly. Yeah, when there's non-hit scan projectiles, when there's just lasers that you can fly around and dodge, you can really feel like a pro. And then homing missiles come and ruin your day, but so it goes. Oh, you almost, uh, you almost dodged both of them. That, that was no. alright. No. Uh, apparently homing missiles are... I'm, I'm playing a source port here, so it's been a little bit of, uh, reprogramming has gone on behind the scenes. Uh, save this cloaking device for later. But, uh... Wait a second. Sorry, I'm interrupting myself. Secret room sense is tingling. Symmetry in progress. Hmm. Something is missing from this room. Something is missing. Wait, do you guys hear that? Do you hear that music? We oh. hear <laughs> <laughs> Let's find some targets. Oh. Many, many targets. In straight lines. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, I have to ditch it right away because I know the weaknesses of this particular weapon. Yeah, so, they uh, make you learn very quickly. Yeah, so uh, when I get back to that weapon, I'll... Do I start pulling out that weapon right away? Ooh, wait. That is a driller that's had his back turned to me. Die. And Rare I, sight. Yeah, and I nailed it with a concussion missile. Look. They ruin your day so often, it's only fair that you get to ruin theirs. True. Uh, so as I was saying about these homing missiles, uh, it used to be that homing missiles updated their tracking based on your on the speed of your... Oh my god, I have zero shields. It's okay. Extra hit on a hole. Yeah, sorry. Homing missiles used to uh, update their tracking based on how fast your... Uh, uh, processor was running because it would do the calculations every so often and as computers got faster say past 386 or Pentium 75s and oh my god I can't believe those computers were slow back then uh, homing missiles they could turn on dying they were already pretty and, dumb maneuverable yeah they, they were they were literally out, you couldn't maneuver around out them and that's better. The fusion, the fusion yep. cannon. That's more so, like it. All right. So behold the fusion gun, the single most powerful weapon in the game. Each of those purple blobs deals about thirty damage on a hit. And oh man, they are. It takes exactly a lot of practice to actually hit with both of them. But even if you hit with one, that's solid. And if yeah. I remember right, I think it pierces small enemies, too. It, it does. It pierces but, and uh, loses damage as it travels, so long as it's still got damage to deliver, it'll keep going. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as I was saying, like, like the uh, hitbox on the fusion beam, it's gargantuan, which makes shooting through tight corridors a pain. Especially once you re realize that, uh, well, you start shaking as you start arming it. So... Well, Ow. you had a pretty good Sound run. Though. Still makes me flinch. Yeah, but as I was saying, like the fusion beam causes your uh, reticle to shake, your entire ship to shake as you're holding down the trigger, because the fusion beam isn't just a click to fire weapon like everything else. No, it's a charge weapon. Yeah, they pulled out all the stops to make this thing seem powerful, to have that kind of powerful game feel to it. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, like, I don't use the fusion beam a lot because it is a niche weapon and it's one of those things where if you're pulling it out, like, 
it's huge. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's nice for one-on-one -on -one encounters with big enemies, but that's not how this game plays. This game plays to make you deal with groups almost all the time. Yeah. Mars levels in particular seem designed to have lots of fast-moving enemies that spray shots at you in wide areas, which isn't the greatest place to use the fusion cannon. No. Uh, like, the fusion cannon does have wonderful, like, does have uses, like, if you can get a clean shot down a corridor with a bunch of enemies, your corridor is clean. But it's also got the problems of your ship shakes as you're arming it, uh, the hitbox, if it even clips a wall, just goes away. And there you can see the proper use of the fusion beam. You know, just one shot. Will you be seeing any uh, long charge time shots later on? Yes, but not for a while because, honestly, unless I'm going up against uber, like, really powerful enemies, remember, when you're charging, you're shaking, so... It's definitely yeah. a case of... It's definitely a case of, you know... You need room to maneuver, and it's really like a close-range weapon, because if you can fire that thing off at point-blank range, that's the best for it. Yeah, that, that plasma can you were just using just now seems to be a lot more accurate, for sure. Plasma is yeah. worth oh. some discussion. It was very popular as a multiplayer weapon back in the day. Um, yes. It does... It's very rapid fire. It's very high damage just because so many projectiles are flying down range. It fills your screen and it drains your battery like nothing else. Yeah. I mean, as I've mentioned in the previous video with Speedball that you guys haven't uh, seen or heard yet, uh, the quad laser, like the lasers here, they're the most energy efficient weapon, so I tend to default to them for the most part. But the plasma weapon has the highest DPS, and I fully deserve those missiles in the face. Yeah. Yeah, so the fusion you. cannon is really about getting the drop on your enemies, whereas plasma cannons are for when you either want to shoot down a really long corridor or when the enemy already knows you're here and you just want to kill them because they're in front of you. Mm-hmm. Hey, as I've mentioned before, like, you know, talking about new weapons as they come in, each of the weapons seems to have its own little niche to it. And aside from the spread cannon, which, you know, my prefer its niche is kind of not as well implemented. They all have their uses, and it's usually just pick the best uh, best weapon for the moment. I always felt, and it does also help problem. that um, you can approach levels from multiple angles. So your it weapons literally... might, yeah. <laughs> so your weapon saying? choices might depend upon the route you're taking through the level as well. Yeah. Oh wait. Blue Let's do this the smart way. Exit or the dumb way. I don't know which way yet. It's a bit worrying when you encounter the exit early in the level. Yeah. As Somehow saying, I have a feeling cannon, that there's going to be more, but uh, so we'll stop take the problem a look. with it is that you get given upgrades to your laser a bit too quickly for it to be useful. It's only useful until you get to about laser level 3, then your laser outpaces it quickly. And you've probably got that by the third level from memory, so it's obsolete by the time you get a spread fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, the spread fire is kind of more of a backup weapon for something to pick up if you're at level laser level one, than uh, to compete with your quad laser level four. Yeah, or you know, just uh, spray and pray it mid range to try and deal with things. And this is me just corner peeking it with these plasma pulse because I hate them. They fire plasmas at you. The heavy yeah. Gorilla. Yeah, don't fight them at low range or short range or you'll regret it. Not hit scan like the nasty little guys with the rat ears, but still quite dangerous. You know, the Vulcan yeah. cannon here. I'm just oh. glad that they have other enemies to put in levels that are not the drillers. Yeah, but they still love the drillers. You know, it's interesting, like, when you get past the demo level and get to Mars, they start mixing up how the levels are constructed and what you can expect from them. Uh, for example, here, like, if you know what you're doing, your first two keys are, like, right in front of you. Push comes to sh when it comes down to it. 
but then it's a long run to the red key and then back to the reactor room. Yeah, they literally have a larger design space to work with. Go figure. Yeah. Oh, cloaking device, because I know what's coming up in this room here. Specifically, homing missiles. And a spare quad upgrade in case it was needed. Not that I need it, because I'm awesome and have the power of saves. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, wait, somebody's shooting at me from behind. Crap. And they know you're somewhere over there, but now they yeah. can see you. But there's a, another cloaking device, and there's an invulnerability also hidden in this room, which I will be using on my way back out. Yeah, some days it feels like half the point of the robots is just to get physically in your way, as opposed to just shooting you, so that you can't just fly straight through them. Yeah. So I have three corridors here, and they actually all lead to different areas. If you have oh, it's the, map the fun here. time uh, aileron roll corridors again. Whee! Yeah, but unfortunately, they're not that long, unfortunately. Me just making sure I have relatively accurate. Uh... Now, this section I'm going through, you can pretty much skip like 90% of it. Because you don't need to go down this corridor at all. Yeah, this isn't Doom. You don't get a uh, enemies killed rating percentage at the end of it. Yeah, but that particular corridor I'm going to deal with later on because uh, it is a massive, colossal trap. You know, I think that door is part of the trap, too, just uh, making sense so you can't run away from those homing missiles at the wrong time. Yeah, but... There I you go. To... Hey, smart missiles for smart play. Yeah, I don't know to what extent they did this in Descent 1, but oftentimes in Descent 2, they'd hide uh, smart missiles behind a secret, because you had to be smart to find them. Yep. Uh, it's, that's actually a, a punt. Wait, something's familiar down this corridor. Is that what I th think it is? Hmm. Is that what I think it is? <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh. More power! <laughs> Let's the immediately makeup. find a tiny enemy to blow up with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, this was a great away. way of killing yourself. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to run away to uh, refill my energy, and then I'll be back. Because I'm down to 37, or sorry, 39. We passed a spawner a moment ago, and that reminded me of something. Because in an earlier video, people were talking about spawner mechanics. Um, the way spawners actually work in Descent 1 is that there's a map trigger that turns them on and they run through a preset program, and then, provided you're not on insane difficulty, they eventually turn off. Um, but every time you touch that trigger, it resets the build order. So if the trigger is in a corridor, and you fly down the corridor, every time you fly down the corridor, the spawner will kick in and start from Robot 1 on its list. So that trigger is tied to a particular cube in the map layout? So, yeah. Sorry, just me just being paranoid about, like, there's no way it'd be that easy to get to the spread fire cannon now, would it? Eh, it's just a spread fire cannon. Who cares? They're a dime a dozen now. True. We've already moved on to plasma weapons. Spread fire cannon was last year. So blasé. Tell me about it. Yeah, these but robots yeah. are such slaves to fashion. <laughs> True. Well, that's definitely making some noise. Yeah, you may have caught a glimpse of it here as I'm checking the map just to make sure I'm oriented right. But these levels get really ridiculously huge as you, when you start looking at them. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Alright, where am I? Upside down, or right way up. And a power corridor that I completely missed on my... when I went to backtrack. There's something down there. We don't know what it is, but we want it blown up, whatever it is. Well, you can tell by the background hum it makes. Yeah, like this particular guy, it's just a homing hole. 
Yeah, just putting the red enemies on the red wall background. It's it's standard practice. Mm hmm Come on, come on, come on. Some days I think these guys actually resist homing missiles, so you can't just, you know, trade shots with them every so often. They probably just have a lot of health. That's how this game works. No health bars on anything. Unless yeah. you've memorized all the damage values in the game. Who has time for that? Not me. I just remember the trick with these guys was to just spam weapons fire at them, because there is a flinch mechanic. And if they're being put knocked back by some kind of impact, they won't fire. Yeah, that, that's actually one of the things that the Vulcan Cannon is useful for. Because it will cause the flinch, because each of these individual shots just keep piling on. Paranoid checking for secret walls, but... Yeah, I, I know your ship can sometimes take minor damage if you hit a wall too hard, but I wonder if that also applies to the robots. No. Hmm. And let's see here. I have the red key. I have everything I need. Wait, nope, not yet. I don't have everything I need. I need to be completionist about this. Yep. And leave the invulnerability for something else. Hey, who opened that door? Nope, it's this right here. Ah. Which is a giant, colossal trap room. He's somewhere around here. Just keep shooting. We'll find him eventually. Yep. You just check in the room here. The spare cloaking device, because that's always hilarious. True. Unfortunately, I seem to be missing a fusion cannon now. Yeah. This is around the point in the game where you have to start learning your uh, keyboard hotkeys instead of manually cycling your weapons, because you've just got so many options. You mean people... there's a cycle weapon button? I, oh. I'm confused. Hmm. But to be fair, I have an actual joystick I'm using while I'm playing this game, so... Oh, I see. So you just hit the uh, Mega Missile button in your uh, cockpit recreation that you're just sitting in. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't have one of those awesome, you know, sit-down super chairs with, like, 360 uh, screens. Look at all that stuff. I, yep. Like, words fail me. There we go. We fit all of that into this little plane, and it's, uh, it's a beauty now. Mm-hmm. But that, there's the fusion beam going off, because you never know when you just want to say... Fuck you. Yep. And honestly, like, you know, seriously, guys, you don't need to come down this way at all. That entire room section is just not really needed. But I think it's time to go finish this off now. Let's go... Go through the red door, save the hostages, blow up the reactor. Yeah, I guess no maze would be complete without at least a few dead ends. Yep. Oh, alright. Let's go. We're on a mission now. Oh, yeah. Come on. John, past John, turn on the rear view mirror. Turn there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, that's cool, but you're invincible. You probably should just let those hit you, right? True, but I mean, there was a couple of sec... I just had to remind people that, yes, there is a rear-view camera on your ship. The robots need to learn fear. Yeah, I think it's... I don't know to what extent they changed the interface around to help support this, but I think it was possible to kind of include that, like, camera and camera in Descent 2, if I remember right. I don't yes. know if that's possible in Descent 1, uh though. Dang it! Nasty surprise. Yeah. Right there. Wait, hold on. Secret room. Wait. Something about this doesn't seem right. Back up. Back up. Turn. Uh, wait. This, wait. Who would put an exit over there? Why is there a second exit from the? Why is there an exit behind the secret door? Well, it must be a secret exit. Yes, it must be a secret exit. Hmm. Aren't you glad there's That's no? That's the thing about this game, though. Um. 
As far as I know, there's no robot-only areas in here. If you see a robot or, like, some power-up behind a grate or something, there is a way back there. It might be behind several layers of secret doors, but there is a way there. Yes. And that's a rule that some other FPSs just break. Like, they just have areas where guards or whatnot are just standing over, and you can't ever get over there. Mm-hmm. And this is actually, you know, people are used to, like, the square rooms and the big rooms. Suddenly, like there's this really thin little room here, and it kind of messes with your perceptions of things. Yeah. Yeah, this, this game does a great job of, uh... Well, pretending that it's not cube-based. I swear, I get better at taking those save things out. I swear, I get better at it. At least for once, I can understand why the hostages are actually trapped. It's not like they can jump that lava pit. Yeah. You know, we're wondering how we fit the hostages in. I think we must strap them under the wings. <laughs> Probably. Well, technically, like, the Pyro GX is 4.6 meters long, uh, and the cockpit is only, like, the first meter and a half of it, so there's room in the back for, you know, people to sit down or cram together. Makes you wonder where all the missiles get stored, then. On those On the wings. wings at the back. Well, okay, how about the nine weapons we have, then? Underneath. Hmm... Also me saying, you know, screw it. I got... There we go. Wow. Now that's a sight for sore eyes. Yeah. Ooh, now. This is where the reactor rooms start getting tricky. Yep. Well, I mean, they've been tricky since, what, episode three, but they really try and dial it up a notch now. Yeah, because that... that this just screams trap. You know, we've already so, had, like, what, five traps that were exactly like this? Mm-hmm. But, so I'm gonna do something silly. There's a cloaking device, don't grab it yet. Passing through here turns on the doors. And the triggers don't always trigger properly, so you have to be careful about it. Also, this would be a great spot to use the uh, Mega Missile in, but I want to save that for a fun day. Yeah, so that's tricky. I think this is the first time they've actually hid the reactor behind an opening and closing door like this. Mm -hmm. Usually they just hid it behind a whole bunch of robots, but at least the path was always clear. This time, you don't get huge windows of opportunity. So I guess they're encouraging you to use your missiles instead of your uh, lasers this time. Yeah. Uh, part of it also, you know this nice little secret door here? Uh, doors stop moving when you shoot them. So it's very possible to prop this door open by constantly firing through it to uh, keep the the door open instead of closing and allowing you to shoot through and hit the reactor. Nice flying to get that smart missile, by the way. Yeah. And this is where the claustrophobic bit gets really cool because you've got to find your way out. As the... Uh, yeah. But fortunately, there is a quicker exit. And might as well go for it. Oh. Neat. Oh. Secret level. But yep, yeah, join me next time when we go through a level with lots of things we shouldn't be seeing yet.